Hey everybody. So I have the pleasure to welcome everybody to the second annual Pressure Injury Prevention Week with UNCG School of Nursing. Everyone can play a part. So Worldwide Pressure Injury Prevention Day is November 17th this year. So this is a way for you guys, everyone can play a part in preventing pressure injuries. What's the big deal about pressure injuries? Well, remember, there is the patient who has to deal with pain, debility, deformity, or death. Facilities, whether it's a hospital, a clinic, home health agencies, or nursing facilities, have to deal with cost, legal issues, fines, or loss of business. And then globally, there's the healthcare issues and financial and time frame that deals with the healthcare facilities or anything with healthcare that deals with pressure injuries. So what is a pressure injury? This is a very long definition. However, to shorten it, it's mainly the localized damage to the skin or the soft tissues that's typically under a bony prominence, but it doesn't always have to be. It could be a medical or some kind of device or anything that increased pressure causes damage to the skin or soft tissues. So now let's go over a few of the pressure injury stages. Pressure injury on that note has been called decubitus, pressure injuries, pressure ulcers, or bed sores. Now the newest term is pressure injuries. So the different stages is stage one. Typically it's just intact skin that just doesn't blanch. So whenever you press on it, it doesn't get pale and then go back to its normal color. Stage two is where the dermis is open. So it's a little bit pink, moist dermis. Stage three is full thickness. So that's where you're actually able to see that granulation tissue, the subcutaneous tissue, and it may even have slough or necrotic tissue. Stage four is full thickness. So typically you are looking at exposed fascia, muscle, tendons, ligaments, cartilage, or even bone. And then slough, necrotic tissue or eschar, may often accompany that as well. Unstageable pressure injuries are those that you can't see how deep they are. The slough or necrotic tissue or eschar is blocking the view of the base. Deep tissue pressure injuries are actually defined intact, but different from a stage one, where a stage one is usually just some redness that's intact and non-blanching, a deep tissue pressure injury is more maroon or purple discolored. And it even could be a blood filled blister because the damage is being done deeper in the tissues and it takes a little bit longer for it to raise its ugly head to show that the damage is done. Mucous membrane pressure injuries are one of the newer pressure injuries identified. They can be staged. These are usually um, identified in areas that have different tissue from our external skin. So the nasal area, um, behind the ears, anything rectal area, urethra areas. And then medical device related pressure injuries those are usually caused from a medical device or something that conforms to the pattern device that presses against the skin and types of soft tissue and causes damage. These are just some really great pictures to really explain about what a stage one, two, three, and four would look like. And then the unstageable, a deep tissue pressure injury, mucous membrane pressure injury, and a medical device. So what can you do? The prevention. Okay, everyone can play a part, whether you're with EMT, a CNA, medical assistant, LPN, RN, a physician, CRNA, caregiver, family member, physician's assistant, or a nurse practitioner. Everyone can play a part in pressure injury prevention. The biggest thing that I like to tell people is just encourage movement often. And if immobile, reposition them. So keep them moving. One thing that I know when we taught our children as we grew up, the little kid's song, head, shoulders, knees and toes, knees and toes. Well, let's take that to a different level and think about for pressure and prevention. Head, shoulders, butts and heels, butts and heels. This way is a way that you can think about how to keep patients moving. 
So not only with offloading, where you would reposition feet and legs and heels so that they're not always touching the ends of the beds or whatever that could cause that pressure, and also making sure that people are turned to reposition frequently, is also just asking your patients, asking your loved ones, move their head, move their shoulders, move around their butts, and then move their feet around and kick them around to move the heels. And that's just one way that you can actually help prevent pressure injuries and get the blood flowing. So even if you're thinking about during a commercial break on TV or radios or whatever that has a little music and break to it, just go ahead and ask somebody to move their heads, move their shoulders, move their butts, and move their feet and legs. This is just a fun way to think about decreasing pressure injuries. We have a self-learning fair that will be November 14th through the 18th this year. And locations will be either at the Nursing Instructional Building on the fourth floor in rooms 462 to 472 or at Union Square Campus front lobby. So there'll be several tables or rooms set up and you can just go at your own pace. There is something for everyone to learn. So just join us and pick up a few pressure injury points. See you soon. Now go and prevent some pressure injuries.